Welcome back LubeTubers, Jamie Bruce here. Bit of a different video today. If you follow the channel for a little bit, you'll know that I dabble in uh, tackle making. I'm always kind of on the putter. So we're back in the shop today. You know, it's ice fishing season starting to come to an end and I'm starting to look at what I've got lined up here. And I've got a big walleye tournament this year, the Dryden Walleye Masters. And the last walleye tournament I fished and I wasn't totally happy with my jig setup. There's a lot of really good jigs out there, but you know, traveling around doing the bass fishing front and everything like that. You kind of get a little bit anal and, and want things just so, and you can't always buy those. So we're gonna hunt today. I'm gonna bend some specialty hooks. Gonna show you how to mod the mold to kind of fit any hook you want. Gonna do some paint and pour it up and we're gonna hunt down the best walleye jig possible. You don't need any kind of special crazy tools or anything like that. Uh, pretty basic. As you can see, we're not in a big extravagant factory here we're just on the putter so stick around and hopefully you can learn something and hopefully i'm going to learn something too because i'm literally just going off the cuff here whatever i see is what you get all right so before i strap the chest camera on and show you exactly what i'm getting into here uh starting with the mold this is the wacky head jig by do it uh lots of walleye guys are probably wondering what a wacky jig is why are you using that mold so on and so forth but if you look closer at this one it's kind of got everything I need. It's got a 60 degree eye, you know, lots of options. There's not a big long collar. So that gives me a lot of options for hook placement. And it's a ball head. That's the style I want to go with. I've played with eerie heads and, and everything like that. And uh, you know, for live bait, leech, crawler, minner slinging, I like a ball head. So that's what we're gonna go with. This one comes in a bunch of different sizes, quarter ounce, all the way down to a 16th. We're gonna dabble in that 3 sixteenths range. You know, that's quick math. That's halfway between an eighth and a quarter. Um, you know, that's not gonna be ideal for every situation, but you know, for sample purposes and just to get something put out here, that's what we're gonna focus on. And hooks today, we're gonna do something different. You know, you can go buy a bunch of VMC ball cocks and, and whatever from Do It, but I wanna use the best of the best in this. I'm going with the VMC red line. I've got some Nico hooks, some drop shot hooks to play with. Uh, gonna do custom bends on them, get them right where we want them. I've been bass fishing, putting all my trust in these all over the US and Canada. Uh, you know, they're my go-to drop shot hook for bass and walleye and everything like that. And what I wanna do is put this hook into a jig head that's never been done before. Uh, especially with these kind of bends. So this isn't gonna be a big, you know, money saving deal or time saver or anything like that. We're looking for the best of the best. Um, these aren't crazy expensive. They're still affordable. We're just, we're looking for the best. There's a lot of money on the line at the Walleye Masters and I wanna be the only person in the field with red line drop shot hooks in their jig. Okay, before I go any further with the mold mods, plate that sucker up. All right, so here's some of the hook options. I've already got them out of the package laid out in my wrap stack foam tray. Like I said, we're gonna toil between the Nikos, the drop shot hook, and probably stay away from the rest. I have bent jigs to fit in molds before. I've used VMC red line hooks in like swim jigs and um, you know, I've had to put the heat to them and just do a slow bend. These are light wire hooks. These aren't for flipping or anything like that. So just a regular set of pliers and you can make it work for you. You just gotta use some caution and a little bit of care. And Hey Siri, set a timer for 40 minutes, turn off lead pot. That. Turn off lead pot. Anytime I turn the pot on in the garage, I always set a reminder alarm or anything. Uh, you never know if something comes up and you have to run off. You do not want that thing sitting there heating away. So just a little tip there, a little safety safety tip. So that's it for that. We're gonna get into it here. Uh, I've already got a couple bent. I'll lay out the mold. That's our own mold. Okay, wacky head jig. Open her up. This is a big number one Nico. So all I did was bend it to fit in there. This one, this is a one-aught drop shot hook, so it's just a short shank. Gonna take a little bit more messing around, but to get that in there is really what I want. I want that hook point clear of the jig, but I still want a little compact design. I don't want line twist. I don't want my leech going wild. 
that's kind of what I have in mind. So you can see these are flat eye heads, which is what I want because they're drop shot hooks. They're aiming that way instead of the standard 90 degree bend jig hook. Um, so what I have to do is mod out my mold so it'll accept that flat bend. You could take pliers to it and make it, you know, aiming the other way, but I want it this way. No crazy big reason in particular. You could get really technical and say that your line is more center on the flat eye bend or, or it's pulling in a different direction, but what I like about it is your line is always sitting in the same spot front to back, which changes more than side to side on a jig, I think, if that makes sense. But anyway, we got to sink down these holes just so I can lay that in there and fit it. So uh, just using a little Dremel tool, carbide tip. It fits perfectly in the eye hole. I don't want to mess up the mold here. You do have a little bit of room for error because, you know, if I dig too deep or whatever, it's really not going to affect anything. So one thing you have to remember when you're modding out molds is just to do the same to each side or as close as you can get it. So you're still going to be able to use that eye the other way in these molds. There's just going to be more clearance on either side. The lead shouldn't fill in there or anything like that. So I'll quit talking and start carving. Just going to start slow, a little bit there. there crank up the pace a little all right gonna start off here just gonna slowly sink in there do the same to both sides just gonna do a little check do a little check we have minor minor gap but worst case scenario it'll just add a little bit of flashing around we're just gonna sand it off but we'll try a couple with that and just see pot's looking hot every time I start a pour I uh, always just load up the mold just to get all the cavities hot lots of people just do the one they're doing but i like to give the lead a little chance to flow just heat up the whole mold in general you can do a couple of these but i think we're going to be just fine with what we got another trick too is to leave it on top of the mold while you're getting warmed up but i missed that step been a bit since i poured Okay, first Nico coming up. Okay, we got a couple poured. You can see that's where the weed guard's supposed to go on the wacky jig. That's fine, we'll be getting rid of that. And then I got a little bit of flashing on the bottom. Gonna have to clean that up. That's just the way of the road. This one doesn't have that flashing around the jig eye. Just that weed guard. We're gonna get everything tidied up. Try the couple other hooks here. This is that little one-aught drop shot hook. This one's a reach because it's not gonna close in there perfect. I just get her smashed down on. There's gonna be flashing like crazy on this. But once I get her cleaned up, I kind of just want to get these ready so I can test them. But all right. I actually broke my really good set of uh, cutters that I use for jig porn, but that's all right. We'll make do with these bush leaguers. Just gonna cut those sprues off. Tap that lead down a little bit on the back. And if you're just doing a couple, I just use these sanding pads. You get them in the painting aisle at your hardware store. If I'm doing a lot for the sprues, I'll set up a grinder on its back and just zip it. But that's not what we're doing today. Just doing a couple, tinkering around. All right, so there's one all cleaned up, 3 16 designed for a wacky jig, but we've got a high-end VMC, red-lined, number one Nico hook in there, custom bend, flat eye. And I'm not good at this. How do these lube tubers do this? Now we just gotta throw some paint on it, make her look pretty, and testing. All right, next step here, just your basic powder painting. I'll usually pull out a toaster oven and use the racks if I'm doing a bunch, but we're just doing a couple. Just gonna finish these up and get them ready for the field here. Just a heat gun, nothing special. Two little cans of powder paint. Gonna do a black base and a little chartreuse flare on her after. Probably get a little loud here. If you haven't done this before, you just kinda have to feel it out. One good trick is just to watch until it's shiny. 
You'll see that lead go from dull to shine. I'll just give her a little hit again. I'm really bad at that focus. Just give it a little hit again there, your basic block. One thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a pinch of that chartreuse glow. I just want it subtle, I don't want it crazy. I just like a little bit. I don't know how much it matters, but for me, I like my jigs pretty. And this is what I'm gonna do. Just gonna reheat this. And just give her a little drop there. It's probably pretty glossy, so you might not be able to see it great, but it's just that subtle little hint of chartreuse. This is a live bait jig made for fishing a leech and a worm. I don't want anything too offensive. Um, it's pretty good there. I'm just gonna balance her out just to make her pretty. And there you have that. All right, well, that's gonna do it for today. I've got a couple finished products here. Uh, you know, still have some work to do to the molds and, and you know, clean things up and make it a little better so I can run a bunch of them once I find what I want. Um, so today was all just, just about playing around, tinkering, learning, but now I've got a pretty cool little walleye jig that I definitely haven't seen before. Uh, you know, it's, it's spec to close to how I want it. I, I don't know exactly which one I'm going to go with yet. Like I said, there's got to be some on the water testing. You can't just look at it in the shop and be like, it's good to go. So we do have ice for a little bit longer. I'm going to take a mice fishing for sure. And, uh, do a little bit of cracking on them, but just goes to show you what you can kind of produce. There's a lot of really good jigs out there, you know, from BT fishing and VMC and a, a million other brands. But, um, you know, if you're one of those people that just wish something was a little bit different, then break out the molds and, and try it for yourself. You know, I, I do a lot of playing around and every once in a while you hit a home run and it, you know, it, it might be something that is gonna apply to a lot of people, not just a, you know, a niche kind of category for fishing. And once we hit those, then, you know, through BT Fishing, we'll pump them out. Uh, we're known for having some innovative stuff and, um, a lot of that comes from just tinkering around in the garage. So so if you have some time to kill, check it out. Don't be afraid to play with your molds. Grab a couple packs of red lines and bend them up and see where you can land. Thanks everyone for watching. That's it for me. I'm going to tie these up and go try to catch some walleyes. Maybe that'll be the next video. See you on the next one.